Hey folks, Rich here at RC Informer. Today I have the latest and greatest from FMS models. This is hot off the presses from the uh, factory. This is their all new 1400 miller Pitts version two, folks. Uh, this has pretty much been the most bang for the buck airplane that you could ever get from FMS models because being a biplane at 1400 millimeters, it grows up really quite a bit when you put it together. It's a, it's a big model. So for the money, you get a really nice big model. They, they've, they've actually gone also too from the white paint job that they used to have. It was white with orange and black trim. Now we got this beautiful, just red airplane that stands out and you can see in the blue sky with the white trim. It's just pretty much awesome. And now we've also gone from a plane that you had to glue a lot of it together if I remember correctly. Now it's just a, a glueless, completely screwed together airplane, and we'll take a look at that inside. So a lot of bang for the buck with this once again, because it's just a big airplane. I'm going to try and get this box up without dropping it. I've done this a couple times already and dropped the box a bunch of times. But you can see how nice that red and white stand out among uh, out in the blue sky, uh, and it's just going to be awesome to get this uh, this whole thing together. Uh, some of the features here, folks, you can see right here: 4258 brushless motor. Uh, 50 amp uh, hobby wing uh, uh, ESC and 17 gram servos. I believe they're digital. We'll take a look as we get in there. It's got uh, panel lines, pilot, rivets, all that kind of stuff. Screw together, oversized battery compartment. And that's really about it. You can see the, the, the parts here that we're going to look at and you can see how, how nicely laid out those are in the picture. And we're going to pull it out of the box right now. Let me throw that box over there. And we're going to take a look at this. FMS is double decorating their boxes now. Uh, with a lot of them. So uh, as we pull this out, I'll kind of just let everybody see how all of this looks. You can see how everything is really nicely laid out here. Uh, all the parts, uh, they're not really bagging them so much anymore because the way they're packaging them, they're really not having to do that so much. The, the parts don't really get damaged in there. We're going to pull everything out and you want to be careful that when you first open this up, you use a hobby knife and just cut along these lines, which is what I did. Um, you don't want to pry any of these out because if you pry some of these out, you can damage the parts. So make sure with a hobby knife you cut all those uh, those foam pieces out with their tape and just get everything out sort of a little at a time. I'll slide this over here. Same with this end. I'm going to reach over here just a little bit, pull that out, and you can see how the parts come out of here pretty nicely. Uh, again, you don't want to be prying up on anything. Just make sure everything comes out nice and smooth and I'll put this wing yeah, like I say guys there's a lot of parts to this thing and you want to just carefully you know just take everything out of here make sure everything uh, looks good looks like the quality is real nice as usual that comes from FMS there's a little bit of padding here let's pull this one out lots of parts here there's a spinner they've also gone I'm pretty sure from I think the old one had a if I'm not mistaken had a three bladed propeller and this one here has a two blade, so it's probably going to be a little more efficient. It's probably going to be a little faster, a little bit more powerful. We'll pull all this stuff out. Here's the landing gear. There's your prop. Nice big prop. Look at that. That's a 15.9, so probably lots of speed and lots of power out of that propeller, I'm willing to bet. And we're going to get, uh, get this out of there. There's your rudder. Try not, once again, to pry this stuff out. See the landing gear's down. Up, oh, the tape stuck to it. That's what got me. The landing gear comes out real nice. Let's see if we can get this fuselage out of here. Like I said, big airplane, folks. You can see maneuvering this around can be kind of tough. Pull this out of here. And put that fuselage down there. Again, big, big airplane. I'm having to stretch and get my cardio in at the same time here, getting this thing out of here. All right, we'll throw that over there. So as you can see, guys, lots of parts with this thing. Let me go ahead and arrange everything, get it all laid out, and we can take a look at uh, each part individually. Here's the layout of all the parts that came out of the box. And then, man, this thing, it really is nice. They did a nice job on this. Everything is here except for two wing panels, because there's actually four wing panels. It takes up a lot of space on the screen. Two wing panels and one of the struts because I'm going to show you that uh, up close and what those, uh, the, what those things look like. But you have the fuselage down here with your motor, ESC, tail servos installed, your uh, vertical uh, stabilizer and rudder, horizontal stabilizer and rudder, two wing panels, one upper, one lower, your main landing gear, prop spinner, uh, two main wing spars right here, your two wing struts, your two push rods that connect your lower and upper ailerons together, and then your bag of parts here, which I initially didn't find in the box. It was kind of buried in there, so you got to look for that. Uh, your screws, nuts, bolts, and some other plastic pieces, and then your instruction manual, of course. So the first thing we're going to pull up here, folks, is the fuselage to look at this thing, and this thing is 
This thing is mighty. Uh, who let the dogs out? Because uh, here it is. This is a big, big dog here. This thing is huge. Um, it's short, so it's easy enough to handle, but it's massive. Just look at the size of this compared to, compared to my hand even. And you can see in here all the cooling. Uh, here's our motor in here, and I'll, I'll flip that around so you can see it's a 4258, 460 uh, kV. And I, I, I think that same thing as the Tiger Cat motors, but I'm not sure, or it's the one that they put in the FMS to Havilland Beaver. But you can see all the cooling. Look at that. Speed controllers down in there. Lots of cooling around this motor so you can beat on this thing aerobatically hard, heat it up, and it's going to stay cool because all that air comes in through here, around the motor, in through the dummy carburetor scoop, and then it all comes out the back here. You can clearly see through there. Look at all that cooling. It goes right. You can see uh, how that air passes all the way through this fuselage over your motor battery and speed controller to keep everything cool. And you can see nice detail all the way around. It's got cooling exhaust louvers. It's got rivets around it. Nice decal application pretty much everywhere. And then I'll go to the bottom first here. Nice plastic fittings for your landing gear to go in. There's four screws here. Your, uh, your, your little triangular uh, gear struts there. They'll, they'll plug in here uh, with nuts on the inside and screws. So there's actually eight screws to get the landing gear on. And nice plastic fittings. You can just see how nice they are. And then now for your uh, screwless or your glueless wing connectors and everything down here where you just have basically screws that put these things in. You got a spar that passes through, your lower aileron servos, which are your only aileron servos, pass through here. And then you've got your metal threaded uh, you know, where your uh, wings connect to. So your wing just plugs right in with your spar, your servo connector screwed in with two screws and you're good to go. So four wing screws total to get your wing on. Real nice underside of the airplane. As we get down to the back here, we got servos, one for your rudder, one for your elevator. They are analog servos on this. I kind of misspoke a little earlier, but analog servos will get the job done for this airplane. Your nice plastic fitting back here with your tail wheel. There is a E-ring here. Be sure to put a little foam tack on that to keep that E-ring from popping off. And uh, this plugs into your rudder, this uh, little piece uh, right here, and that, that's what gives you your tailwheel steering. So nice plastic fitting with your uh, tail strut support right here that's going to plug into that. Uh, and then across the top here, your elevator, which you can see right down there, that's going to go on here with two machine-style screws. Your vertical is going to plug right into here, and it's going to come down, and it's going to slide onto this little latch right here on your, on your horizontal stabilizer. And then you're going to have one screw to put that in, so three screws get your whole tail on there, and then you got some wing supports that you just want to kind of pop into place. Uh, there's our other 17 gram servo. I believe there's four of them on this plane, one for the elevator, one for the rudder, uh, and two for the ailerons, and we're good to go. And then across the top, look at that beautiful cockpit, and look at those wing struts. This is one of the nicest things on this plane. You can hold it from this. You know, that's all you need to support this thing. It's a nice, tough plastic component. It glues right in here. I think you had to glue this on originally from the very first, from the version one but now they have it all screwed in and you can see you got metal threads to bolt your upper wing on because your upper wing needs four screws as well so metal threads all the way in there super nice design i'm so glad to see them updating this airplane because it was pretty awesome and you can see that cockpit instrument panel really nice detail all the way around there's your standard fms pilot he's uh he's uh He's been hired to fly all the FMS airplanes, so yeah, it would be nice to have a newer pilot, but um, he's the guy we get. So notice the cooling hole to help get hot air out of there. Cooling holes down below to keep uh, ventilation in the canopy a little bit so the heat of the sun doesn't blister and bubble this as much. And as you just saw, real nice snap canopy latch with a plastic doubler in there. That snaps on and off real nice. And uh, inside pilots screwed in or screwed up, however you want to call it. But there's your cooling holes again. Nice canopy, tongue groove in the front. And then look at the inside. Look at the volumes that are in this thing. You can put all kinds of batteries. Um, that your rudder and elevator uh, uh, wires are coming from the back here. They did use an XT60, which probably should be fine for the low amp draw of this. However, I may desolder mine and just put blue connectors on their EC5s because all my six cell batteries use EC5. So, and you can see here they've updated the battery tray with their clip in. Um, so as you pull this thing out, uh, you'll probably want to put some Velcro or some shelf liner or something on this to keep your battery in place with the two straps. And uh, you can see how it goes all the way up there. There's your speed controller in there. And uh, let's see, here's the challenge. Can I get this thing on uh, in there? Yep, I can on camera, and it's great. Make sure when you get your battery tray in this airplane as you slide it forward. Don't just slide it forward because if you're doing aerobatics and maneuvering and this slides back, 
you can mess up your CG, your CG can shift back, and you can kind of have a hard time controlling the airplane, possibly lose control of it. So make sure when you push this battery tray in, it snaps into place so that battery doesn't move. You don't want your CG changing while you're flying. Once again, you pop that out, and once you get your battery in, you slide it in, snap it into place just like that. Make sure it's uh, definitely locked in there. So we'll get the canopy back on here. Let's tongue and groove that in place. We'll snap this in and that will clip forward. You can see right there, it's now latched in place with that nice plastic uh, lock there. So really sweet overall, folks. Big fuselage, but it is easy to handle. It's big and fat. And again, you can see how big this thing is. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that down right back there on display so you guys can see it. And then we're gonna talk about the wings. Oh, I knocked my camera there. Um, this is your lower wing. This is where your servo is. 17 gram analog, your upper, your lower servo. Uh, an aileron drive your upper one and I'll show you that here in a second nice wing spar through here Look at the the fit and finish on this thing very nice all the way around this thing's gonna stand out Like a sore thumb. It's beautiful. It's gonna look nice in a blue sky uh, This nice bright red paint and here is our wing connector again. That's your only wing servo it plugs right in uh, on the in the through the hole your uh, spar your main wing spar goes through here and then these two those two uh, points down below, you'll see right there, <coughs> excuse me, those plug right into there and your two screws will uh, go through the, uh, the bottom there. There's my other wing falling and telling me to go grab it. You can see your ball link and, and your uh, rod horn and linkage already applied and you've got your hinge here. So let me show you this real quick. This is your wing strut uh, your, that's, that connects the two together. You can see how nice and easy that is to get on and off. I don't remember how the old style was, but it might have been more difficult than this. I don't remember. Uh, but you just slide that in place and it's on. And your upper wing goes in here as well, which is the thing that just fell and told me to, hey, pick it up. And uh, here's, our, uh, here's our upper wing, and I'll show you that right here. You can see how nice of a fit and nice finish that this wing has. They painted it all red, applied the decals to it really nicely. And this is the part that plugs in to your upper wing struts right there. Your spar passes through here. And then on the underside here, you can see how nice and clean this is. Spars running through here. And then that's where your pylon to join your upper and lower wing connect. Um, your ailerons uh, and all the hinges on this airplane are hinged with foam hinges. So you want to give those a little bit of flex, make sure they're moving. Well, and you can see in there, they are laminated. If you see a little cracking in there, most of the time that's just the paint because it's a laminated hinge. If you have any issues with this, just let the factory or wherever you bought it from know. However, if I ever have a problem with a foam hinge like this, I will usually just run some foam tack down the middle of that. I'll just put some foam tack in there with a Q-tip, just run it down there, make sure it uh, dries, and then you'll have a nice tough hinge again. So, but again, your upper, and your lower ailerons connect with this little connector you can see right here. Get a good, good look at that right there. And there's your struts that connect your lower, <coughs> sorry, push rods that connect your lower ailerons to your upper. So both your upper and lower ailerons are gonna move together through that strut, through the uh, lower 17 gram servo. So let me get those wings away. There's wings everywhere. And I'm gonna go down in here and grab my tail surfaces to show you guys how nicely these things are going to go together. So your lower one just gets bolted right on there. And you can see this locking mechanism underneath here. This is literally, once you get the lower on, uh, or get the horizontal stabilizer bolted into place on the tail, on the fuselage, you've got two screws to bolt it down with. And then this piece here, if I can show it to you all, that's going to that's gonna, that's gonna fit right in here. And then it's going to slide forward and it's going to lock the two in place. And then a single screw is going to go down through here, through the back of the fuselage, and put the whole thing on. So three screws will get this tail surface on, and you can see how nice this is as well. Again, you'll probably see a little cracking here. In most cases, that's the paint. It's not the hinge. This is a laminated hinge. But again, if you have any problems, run some foam tack down there, top and bottom. This is pretty normal for foam hinges. And what that's going to do is make it nice and, nice and tough. Same thing with your vertical but real nice tail surfaces all the way around. You got really great ball links and a nice plastic interconnector to connect the two halves of the elevator together. Uh, ball linkages, rods everywhere, really nice. And then here's your uh, ball link for your rudder. 
Um, you can see how nicely, lots of tail deflection there and uh, nice plastic fitting where your tail wheel strut or, or pin is going to slide in there and there's a little screw to kind of bolt that and keep that on so your rudder and your tail wheel turn together. So really nice empennage, real nice tail on this airplane. And I'll go ahead and I'll put that down and we'll get the landing gear out here. Let's take a look at this. This is tough stuff, folks. Uh, they did a nice job on this. Um, eight screws to get your landing gear on. You can see how nice this is. It's going to flex and it's going to pivot. Let me see if I can get this right. It's gonna flex and pivot on those hinge points. So you've got lots of suspension um, through this, this, this metal rod here. And uh, the wheels are real nice overall. They spin well. And uh, just real nice, tough landing gear. Nicely applied decals all the way around. Uh, I remember flying this plane before. It does have some tough gear. So you can, it'll, it'll, it'll compress quite a bit and give you the suspension that you need on grass and so forth. And then here's one of the newer parts, prop and spinner. I think this is the same prop uh, they have on the de Havilland Beavers, a 15.9 prop. It's massive, lots of power. And I think this plane, if I'm not mistaken, used to have a three-bladed propeller. So we're now at a, at a two-bladed propeller, and it's going to be much more powerful this way, I think. It's going to probably have boatloads of speed and power now because this thing just pulls hard, if I remember correctly, uh, especially with this prop on there on the de Havilland Beaver. Nice spinner all the way around, hex drive for positive lock on the motor. And uh, here's your wing spars. We took a look at your struts. These are your two interconnecting rods that we just uh, talked about that connect your lower ailerons to your upper ailerons. They're pretty nice, come with fuel tubing on them already, and they're ready to snap into place. These are some of the older style FMS links that I always liked. These were awesome. They're nice and tough. They're just a pin style, no need for a ball link. Uh, but they're nice and tough and nice thick rods all the way around and then we got your parts manual your parts bag and the manual you can see the parts here <coughs> these two pieces right here are your tail struts i think they're mostly cosmetic uh, but they do provide a little bit of strength and then you've got some doublers for the top of the wing this is a doubler for the landing gear your uh, rudder and elevator uh, rod uh, and ball link and then screws and nuts just to get your wings on. There are a few screws to get this together, but that's it. It's just screws, which is real nice. And then you've got a Y harness. I'm pretty sure that's for your ailerons to get the two wing aileron servos uh, in sync together. I'll go ahead and throw those down there. And then, of course, we got your instruction manual. This is bent. It's messing me up a little bit, but as we uh, move along here, I'll get through here. There's your parts right there all uh, laid out just as we talked about. You can see uh, everything's there. And uh, then your instructions. It shows uh, eight screws for your landing gear to get that in place. You got four screws for your lower wing. Uh, your tail horizontal goes on with two more screws. You've got one screw in that latch mechanism we talked about to get your rudder in place. And then we've got your, uh, your tail uh, um, horns and ball links. You just pop into place. Let's go along here. We've got your lower struts for your horizontal stabilizer. Again, I think those are mostly cosmetic, but you know, once you snap them in, they do provide uh, some support there. There's your two uh, wing struts we talked about that just snap into place. You put your upper wing on, snap the struts into place. There is a spar for that, so there's a spar for both wings. And then uh, you've got those upper, you can see right there. Those two right there are your doublers for your wing. So again, four wing screws for the top wing, and then uh, that's it. They show you latching the. They show the pylons being actually latched there. Second, uh, I did that a little out of order. Then you got your prop and spinner right here, and your canopy, battery, and everything kind of snaps into place. They talk about proper control throws. I'll talk about that more as I fly this airplane. And uh, the CG, most important thing really in there, 155 to 165 aft of the leading edge. And that looks like it's the upper wing because the upper wing has a little bit of a sweep to it. So, but I'll talk about that more uh, as we fly it. It's usually there's a programming guide in here, but I'm not sure if they are including that in here anymore. Uh, it may or may not be here. I don't think it is in here. But anyway, that's really it, folks. I'm dying to get this one out to the field. This is a beautiful, big, big bang for the buck type airplane from FMS. It's, it's huge. It's huge in its mass. It's, the wingspan's only 1,400 millimeters, but... Uh, it's a nice airplane once you get this together, and I, I can't wait to get this out there and fly it. It's just going to really stand out at the field. It's big and bright and uh, very, very well made. The new design is pretty awesome. So anyway, guys, uh, stay tuned for the flight video. Uh, please like and subscribe. Check out the video links I'll throw here uh, at the end. 
And uh, once again, folks, thanks for watching RC Informer. And as always, we'll see you next time.